Hello, and welcome to another edition of Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm C.J. Ferry. And I'm Bob Chip Camara. How are you today? <laughs> We'd like to welcome you to another edition and uh, say it uh, definitely hasn't been a quiet time for us. Uh, we found some definite uh, interesting things to bring to you this week. And uh, I think we're going to get Chip to start right off. Well, we've got so much to talk about in so little time. It's, it's election time, and there's always a lot to talk about at this time. So uh, I guess we're going to begin with the bond rating. Uh, we've, we've seen some press about the bond rating, and that kind of coincides with uh, it's always good news time at election time. So, CJ, why don't you give us your spin on the bond rating? Well, the mayor held a press conference on um, Thursday. Um, that was, what, the 4th? The fourth, Four, I believe. I believe yeah. um, no, the third. That was the third. third. Yeah, the third of October, and um, he said that our bond rating took a bump from a B to an A level, um, and that this bond rating now shows that Fall River is in a uh, stable economic climate. Um, but one of the things he didn't mention in the um, press conference was that the Fall River bond rating has been piggybacked on the state bond rating. Um, and that's what has bolstered the Fall River bond rating, which means that um, in a way that most people will understand it, um, my credit sucks. So I have Chipper go and he co-signs my loans. And basically that's what's happened here. The Fall River credit sucks and the state has gone and co-signed Fall River's loans. And that's what's really happened. Um, and that's basically helped to improve Fall River's credit rating. Um, but I think the real interesting comment the mayor made was that although Fall River's credit rating is improving, um, taxes are still going up and job availability is still going down. So what does um, uh, improved credit rating mean to uh, the average homeowner and the average person in the city of Fall River? Absolutely nothing. All it means is Fall River can borrow more money and tax the hell out of us more frequently. Well, that's, that pretty much sums it up. But the fact is that it, it's always ironic that bond ratings seem to always go up uh, around election times. And uh, it's something that goes back for many, many years. And it kind of goes along with the old saying that uh, figures don't lie, but uh, liars can figure. Um, you know, they can manipulate bond ratings. And, and as, as you said, CJ, uh, the bond rating only means we're going to get deeper in debt because when you get a better bond rating, they try to bar in more issues, which just pushes debt down the road for us and our grandchildren and their grandchildren. But the reality is the person who lives in Fall River who has a $20,000 annual income on an average, which is less than a third of the uh, state, uh, it really, uh, that doesn't mean anything. The increase in taxes, the increase in fees, and the increase in the cost of living in Fall River, uh, while the quality of living in Fall River goes down, the cost continues to increase. So the reality is the bond rating is really irrelevant to the everyday person. And that's why we're talking about it here and, and we're gonna set the record straight and give you some straight talk about this. This is, again, election time political hype. And it, you, know, you can prove it's a election type political hype because bond ratings come out usually once or twice a year. And this bond rating was released on June 18th at 6.11 p.m. by Moody's. Uh, we're in October. We're just hearing about it now, when this came out on June 18th. And the funny part about it was later that morning, uh, Sean Kadim came out and did say, oh yes, this is old news that came out in June. Um, and it really has no effect on the people of Fall River, except that we will be bonding more and, you know, the taxes are going to go up and there are fewer jobs. So, you know, hooray uh, Mayor Flanagan and hooray, uh, hooray uh, City Council uh, of Fall River, because you're going to tax us more and you're going to... Uh, Make sure that we have fewer jobs, and that's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, I, I, you know, you wonder why you can't keep people in Fall River. This, this is one of the reasons. Yeah, well, it, it, it's pretty apparent that if they have to save news from June to, to give out just before an election, they haven't got much good news around election time. We, we have to save and put in a can 
any kind of perceived good news till election time to hype up an election bid. And as CJ said, uh, you know, the fact that living in Fall River is getting more expensive and earning a living in Fall River is getting more difficult segues into our next topic, jobs. And uh, we recently uh, saw a press conference held at the airport and uh, it had to do with jobs. And CJ, do you want to uh, bring everybody up to speed on this? Yeah, I, I think this, this press conference was very interesting because um, this press conference initially um, was incited, uh, and I really shouldn't use that word, but um, was incited by several city councilors um, and a candidate for, uh, for mayor, uh, Joe Cavallo. Um, and they incited this because uh, a local business, uh, Montauk, um, manufacturing, which manufactures uh, high-end towels and sheets and whatnot, um, had entered into an expansion contract with a company, I believe, out of Medford. Um, and they hired a company, that company hired a company out of East Providence to do all their contract work. Um, I'm still trying to figure out who did the um, survey and site planning work, because I want to find out who got that contract. Um, and on the, the night before this press conference, um, the mayor and the city council president were running around crazy trying to get city councilors to back out of this press conference. They did not want people up at the airport. They kept saying, have the press conference down at City Hall. Have the press conference down at City Hall. And that kind of made me uncomfortable. Why would you want to have a press conference about jobs in Fall River down at City Hall, especially when it was about a Fall River-based manufacturer. Um, and everyone kept saying, you know, George Montauk, who owns the company, uh, is a good employer. He works very well with his employees. His employees speak very highly. And we're not saying that Mr. Montauk isn't a very good employer. What we're saying is, is that this expansion had no Fall River jobs in it. Um, the day of the press conference, just prior to 9 a.m., um, five local Fall River companies were hired to do work for alarms, fire suppression, plumbing, electrical, um, and carpentry work. Um, and we still don't have a lot of answers of, you know, where these jobs are co were, were coming from prior to the, the day of the press conference at 9 a.m. Um, and the city councilors all were, you know, were nowhere to be found, including the major city councilor, uh, who was a labor leader, who wanted to be there and who was fighting for this. Um, and he, where he was was at the mayor's office screaming for jobs in Fall River. So that city councilor stood up for workers in Fall River, that city councilor being Dan Rigo, and he stood up for workers in Fall River saying, no, we have to make sure that workers in Fall River have the opportunity to get jobs here when we're giving TIFs away. Because they gave away a multi-million dollar TIF package over a 10-year period. Yeah, that's correct, and I think that's, that is the bottom line. We're going to hear a lot of spinology on this issue because I'm glad you used the adjective incite because it did incite a tremendous amount of concern about having a press conference at the site. And we heard about uh, Mr. Matuk and how, you know, what a good employer he is, and, and I don't doubt that. But the fact and the bottom line was that the first part of that expansion, the concrete pouring, was being done by a Rhode Island company. It wasn't being done by a Fall River company. It, wasn't, it didn't have any Fall River workers involved. And that was the issue that Council Arrigo brought to the forefront, and that was the reason that we began to ask questions. And the reality of that is that uh, we heard during the inc incitement and the excitement that uh, you know, they, that Mr. Matuk had lived up to the spirit of the TIF, which says there'll be an attempt to get Fall River workers. And the spirit just says there'll be an attempt. And the attempt was they supposedly called one Fall River concrete contractor, and they never received a return call. I'm not sure about that because in this economy, I find it difficult to believe that a contractor wouldn't get back to someone. Uh, and that may, in, in the eyes of many people, say that they've lived up to the spirit of the contract. However, 
I don't think our government and our Fall River of economic destruction lived up to their part to be aggressive to try to get Fall River people to work. My question is, and I always tell you, we should always ask why. Why wasn't every concrete company in the general area that employs Fall River workers told about this opportunity? Why weren't they afforded the opportunity to bid? Why, weren't they, why wasn't Mr. Matuk and his company basically pressed to allow them to entertain bids? Because the fact is, it's a quid pro quo here. Mr. Matuk is receiving a 10-year TIF. He's saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes. And I believe that since he's getting such a break from the city of Fall River, that he owes at least the opportunity for people in Fall River to get a job. And I think that he may live up to the spirit, but I think it's up to our government to ensure that we make every single effort to put Fall River people to work. And people are going to say a lot of things. People were called uh, many names about this press conference, and they said it didn't do any good. I think it's, it's, it's not coincidental that Fall River companies uh, uh, got the other bids. They're going to say they were there prior to, but I doubt that seriously. But a major factor was Councilor Dan Rigo went to Boston and got language to put in subsequent TIFs, which will guarantee that a percentage of the workforce on any job from any company that gets a TIF will employ Fall River people. Now, my question again is, why over the last 20 years hasn't the Fall River of economic destruction thought of something like this? And why hasn't our government pressed for something like this? Because they like backroom deals. They were very upset about the scrutiny that this press conference brought on this entire project. And that's the bottom line. The bottom line is they don't like straight talk or scrutiny. And, you know, it was very interesting because Dan Rigo went very far to make sure that this provision is, was put in the TIFs because that provision guarantees 50% of the jobs, 50% go to Fall River residents, not 50% go to Fall River companies, 50% go to Fall River residents. So if you've got a company that has a, a, co a concrete contract, and they have 100 people that work for them, at least 50 of them have to come from Fall River. Some people may think that, you know, well, you're, you're telling me I have to hire 50 people from Fall River. Well, if you want the job, you have to have 50 people that, hire, that come from Fall River. But, I mean, that's a way to guarantee some employment here in Fall River, to make sure people are working. And the government works for us. And this is where I think we've had a shift in politics over the years, for some reason, the government thinks that we work for them. And, you know, or at least, you know, they work for themselves. <laughs> and they don't have anyone to represent. Um, and we know otherwise, and we hold them to it every day. Um, it's just very, it, it's very sad, though, that it takes issues like this to be scrutinized so carefully um, to have significant positive change to occur here in Fall River. And then those people who come out um, have be called publicly and on the air names. Well, it, uh, th there, was a, there was a very, very concentrated attempt to, to attack Councilor Rigo for what he did, and also everyone else involved in this. And I think that uh, the citizens of Fall River should be outraged by the fact that we had a city councilor fighting for jobs for the people of Fall River, and he was attacked for doing this. And, and regardless of what anybody says, I have not seen the Fall River of economic disaster or the government and the present administration who talks about they want to make Fall River a better place and want jobs, try to market the people we already have. We hear about trying to get new business in. How about putting the people to work that live here? How about aggressively marketing businesses to use Fall River companies? And also, when someone gets a TIF, 
we can require it. They are saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in property taxes with those TIFs. So it is a quid pro quo. And I think that even companies that don't get TIFs should be aggressively marketed by our office of, well, we know what it is, and our government to try to put our people to work. We have the third highest unemployment rate in the state. We have the lowest per capita income for a city of our size in the state. And I think that that speaks volumes to the lack of aggressiveness that our government has had. And if anything, rather than attempt to assassinate the character of Council Arrigo and everybody else that was involved in this, the government should be applauding his efforts and they should be following with him. Yeah, they, and they should have supported the efforts here. Um, but when threats of criminal action, um, sanctions, um, you know, censure, um, when you have um, press um, entities um, and personalities come out and make comments that you are against jobs when obviously you're, you're fighting for them, um, you, you have to wonder, you know, where, where are their heads, you know? And, 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 and so you just say, we're going to do what we need to do, and that's why we do what we do, you know? And we're here to make sure that people know that we're not here to, to take a political side. We're here to just tell it like it is. Well, it, apparently the people who were saying this have to have an agenda. Uh, the fact is they wanted to settle this in the back room, and that is something that we've been moving more and more toward in doing business in this city. And especially with this administration, there has been virtually no transparency. And it's not our accusations. They have been accused of this on many occasions, on many issues, of making deals in back rooms, of doing things that, uh, that are not aired in the public forum for the taxpayers who are paying the bills so we can actually see what's going on. And one of the problems with backroom deals is that no one really knows what was said or who was involved. Uh, it, you can speculate, is it, is, it, is it irony, is it coincidence that the first contractor who was working at that site was from Providence? when our mayor has lunch in Providence virtually every day? I don't know, maybe it's a coincidence, maybe it's just a little bit of irony, but it does give you, it does give you something to think about. Or maybe it just goes into our next subject of lies, damn lies, and more lies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> take it away, CJ. Uh, you know, it's very interesting because how can the mayor not know what's going on when he's making comments and he's confirming stories. The mayor went on the air. I mean, it was a rumor. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't report on it. Uh, and I checked our, our tapings and I, I checked our shows because I wasn't sure if we had reported on it. But there was a rumor that had been circulating. And again, we try not to report on a lot of rumors um, that the Herald News was being, uh, an attempt to, uh, to purchase the Herald News was being made by Mr. Ruggiero, owner of First Ford. Man, uh, mayor, friend, uh, business associate, and uh, alleged uh, man uh, who has cause an or um, a mob cons uh, ties uh, was uh, t trying to buy the Herald News. And we were wondering what was going on with that. But we didn't really report on it. But the mayor confirmed it in an interview with Barry Richards on WSAR, uh, which, by the way, we do have a copy of the um, interview. Um, immediately, Lisa Stratton of the Herald News and Gatehouse Media reported that um, that was untrue. And she wanted to know, you know, how could the mayor not just, you know, make a phone call down the street to the Herald News, a reputable business here in Fall River for over 140 years, and confirm or deny the story? Um, and I have to ask myself, and so should you, how can the mayor confirm a story about the purchase or sale of a business in Fall River, especially a business that controls the media, that controls the information flow uh, to the people of Fall River without knowing his facts, um, especially from 
somebody he claims is his friend and business associate. I also have to ask, how can you make claims which you can't back up because you claimed on WSAR that Mr. Ruggiero is a self-made billionaire, but according to all the reports that I find, he's not. I mean, I have to ask myself those questions. What about you, Chip? Well, I have to ask, uh, you know, number one, uh, what was the mayor gaining by even making the statement? What has the sale of the Herald News got to do with the economic condition of the city? Uh, what has it got to do w with anything except maybe his relationship with Mr. Ruggiero? And I'm going to read the quote that Lisa Stratton uh, is attributed uh, with. Uh, this is directly out of the Herald News article. This is, quote, it's unfathomable that the mayor would confirm this erroneous report in the public arena and on the air when he or the radio station could have just as easily picked up the phone and learned the truth. I don't know who is more ridiculous. And, you know, I think that kind of says it all. Yeah. And it, 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 it is, it's actually a very scary situation when we have the chief executive officer of the city of Fall River who apparently works on rumor and innuendo rather than fact. And how can we trust his judgment in any other arena when he does things like this? This is just absolutely, as she said, it's ridiculous. You know, it's, 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 it's scary because when you think about it, um, you know, because you know I always talk about following the money. Um, and I've, I've followed his campaign finances for several years now. Um, you have to wonder, you know, why would you make an erroneous statement? What, and as you said, what did you gain by making that statement? I mean, that's a lie. I mean, it's an outright lie, okay, in my opinion. Um, and again, that's my opinion, but let, let's, let's, let, let's go right there first and foremost. Um, but, you know, if Mr. Ruggiero didn't make that statement to him or did not make that bid, you know, somebody's somewhere got their communication lines crossed, you know, and you have to ask yourself, why would you do that? What gain did you have from that? And how is that to benefit you or the city? Um, and as you said, how can the chief executive officer of the city of Fall River operate on rumor, half-truths, or lies? You can't, I mean, how can the unions negotiating a contract with the city believe what the mayor says to them now? How can the teachers, how can the citizens, when the mayor says, I'm not going to raise your taxes, turn around and say, yeah, he's telling us the truth because look at what he did here. How, how can you believe what he says? Well, you know, obviously that, that's a question we all have to ask and we have to ask why. But it seems he has a very cavalier attitude about things. Uh, just his comment that still sticks in my craw a bit is about when he said that when he was questioned about why he has lunch in Providence so often is, you know, what's the big deal or something to that effect. Well, the big deal is we have restaurants in Fall River that are barely scraping to survive. If you're the, if you're the mayor of this city and you want to you want to increase the the economic uh, health of the people in Fall River, why don't you have lunch in Fall River? Why don't you have lunch in a downtown business? Why don't you do something that helps the economy of the city? And I go back to another issue: is that, that this is another quote from the Herald News. This is the quote. Um, from a text message that was sent to a Herald News reporter by the mayor. Quote, FYI, I was told from a reliable source that Joe Ruggiero placed an offer to buy the Herald News. Unquote. Well, there's another thing that gives me a little bit of cause to pause. If the mayor's reliable sources are that unreliable, what other reliable sources is he depending on to make important decisions for the city of Fall River? And interestingly enough, that message was actually a photograph in the Herald News, that, the, the picture of that cell phone with that message in it. So you have to say, you know, what, what's, what's to be gained? Um, you know, it, it, it's really scaring me and um, what will happen. Um, 
you know, the, the people of Fall River deserve a lot better than what they're getting. And the problem is, is that they keep getting the dog and pony show and they're believing what they see. And, um, you know, I think we've said this before on the show, P.T. Bonham had it right. There's a sucker born every minute. And um, I think he got that when he came to Fall River <laughs> because it seems to be, you know, the truth be known here. Uh, we need to know what's happening and, and how it's happening. Um, Fall River has a long history. Let's not make part of its history, you know, receivership or worse. Um, we're looking at some very trouble, troubling times coming in the next couple of years. And we want to be sure that we have the right people in the right places doing the right things at the right time. That's 100% that's right. And we get back to something we talked about earlier in the show, uh, the, the statement about the bond rating, but the kind of afterthought that taxes are going up and, and unemployment is, is still bad. And, but these are the things that really matter. We can't, we have to ask and pay attention. We have to ask why and pay attention to what's said. In reality, the lead of that statement was totally irrelevant to the everyday person in Fall River. You know, the bond rating means absolutely nothing to everybody except that we may go in deeper debt because now they'll be more prone to bond things with a better bond rating. But the fact that the taxes are going up and the fees are going up and that the unemployment hasn't gone down, these are the things that matter to the people who live in a tenement and are having difficulty making rent. These are the people who own houses or are on fixed incomes and who are barely making their taxes. And these are the things that really matter. And it, you know, it seems as though that our government has a total disregard for what's happening in the city. Yeah, it does. And, and you know, with that, we're coming to the end of our show. I just want to say that it's up to you. It's not just about going into the ballot box and checking it out. It's about calling your city councilor, your mayor, your school committee member, and asking them questions and telling them what you want. And with that, I'm C.J. Ferry. And I'm Chip Kamara. Remember, ask why and hold their feet to the fire. This is Spindle City Straight Talk, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for viewing.